In the 2010 earthquake that rocked Haiti, all but one of the island nation's medical schools were destroyed. But even before the disaster, Haiti faced an acute shortage of trained medical personnel. It's pretty uh, sobering when you see um, the problems that clinicians face in Haiti every day. Along with triage in the days following the quake, nephrologist Brian Remillard spent time mentoring medical residents in Haiti's field hospitals. They have this intense interest in medicine, and I was just a teacher for them. And uh, I wanted to continue that link when I came back. The need to help train and keep physicians in Haiti where they are desperately needed led to the creation of the Haiti Medical Education Project. When you teach medicine, it's uh, teaching the knowledge, but also teaching the profession. Launched in 2010, the weekly teleeducation program is a virtual lecture hall with an international team of medical experts, including Remillard, sharing their knowledge. The French, well, <laughs> my father was one of 17 children from a big Quebecois family. And the fact that he's fluent in French, of course, is, is, is very essential for this program because all the lectures are given either in French or we have a, a direct translation right on the spot. I've had to translate and it may not be perfect, but I think it, it works. Thanks to donated software, Haitian medical students and physicians are able to connect via iPads and portable devices, even in rural areas with limited connectivity. We were able to um, use a, a software called Video and um, to um, leverage that into um, video conferencing within the country and across basically the world. Rather than traveling to Haiti for two weeks for a limited engagement, the technology allows Remillard's team to be permanent consultants, permanent colleagues. Philippe, je voudrais te présenter Miriam Dowling. Dowling will be working with nurses at the just completed 300 bed hospital in Mirabolay, a modern state of the art facility which accommodates high speed internet lectures. They really want to start a critical care unit at this hospital in Mirabalay. So they've had the opportunity to create an entirely new institution after the earthquake. To help nurse and physician teams deal with complications of chronic renal failure, Dowling and Remillard would also be providing some on-the-ground training. I left a dialysis machine there after the earthquake, and we've been able to get that machine to Mirabalay. We've been able to show that it's still functional. I was able to get supplies from the Next Stage company for at least a few months of dialysis and catheters, all the infrastructure we need to do acute dialysis. So what we're going to do in Haiti is sort of an interesting hybrid of outpatient dialysis and acute inpatient dialysis. The goal is to eventually facilitate kidney transplants in Haiti. We leave the native kidneys in place unless they run that. What surgeons describe as life-saving as well as cost-saving procedures. From a surgical standpoint, it's something that we could certainly pull off. It has been done in various third world environments. In global health, the real challenge is not to, to jump in, do a few procedures and jump out, but to really build an infrastructure within the host country that allows the, the procedures to go on into the future. We oui, hello, Philippe. We oui, say Brian. I've spent tremendous amounts of time on the phone with nonprofit organizations trying to get support for dialysis supplies and equipment. Um, and of course, that's a temporary fix. Money is always a hurdle, but the biggest challenge is how to make all this sustainable to ensure that the next generation of Haitian doctors are trained and ready to care for their own. And in the end... Create an environment that gives them hope that they can move into the future. Absolutely. <laughs>